especially in the United States, that tends to be the version of politics that survives the longest in any of these communities. But the point of these communities ultimately is to supersede politics, right? Political goals have an image for a world that they'd like to exist, for better or for worse. There is a, there's a goal they hope to accomplish with their actions. That is not the case for, for stuff like this, for these, these types of communities. The only person who will ever know why he did what he did will be the shooter, for sure. But the the politics of these of these communities are are much are much more complex than a a Trump flag or any anything that could even be considered adjacent to electoral uh, are the types of things that they reject outright. Alex, do you want to add to that? Yeah, absolutely. So I, I wanted to make the point too that. Um, Politics, so, so what we've been talking about today is the direct line between um, the, the shooter's immersion in types of communities and his decision to carry out a mass shooting. Like the, the, ab, the way that we believe currently with the evidence that we have, the, the mass shooter justified the shooting in the moment is based on a lot of different patterns, based on a lot of different historical contexts that we have. And from the best that we can consider, the best that we understand with the evidence that we have av available, there is not a direct line between some sort of idea for, as Amy said, a vision for a world after and the, 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 the attack itself. This is separate. This is very distinct from a shooting like the Chrysler shooting or even the Buffalo shooting where there was a very clear line between a vision for a world in the future and, the, um, and, and why the, the attack was being carried out. This is not to say, though, that politics and ideology play no role. The, the way that you can think about it is that all of these types of attackers are immersed in uh, ecosystems that have politics flying around all over the place every single day. They are immersed in radical politics, in hate speech, in virulent racism, in virulent anti-Semitism, in sexism, in misogyny, all these different things. And oftentimes this does result in these types of attackers in the past engaging with politics in certain ways. So. Um, that all of that is in really very important uh, sort of like foundation building for why an attack like this is produced in the first place, but it is not the direct justification line as far as we can tell. So for instance, with the, the, you know, the appearance of the Trump rallies and the waving of the Trump flag, what we can tell from you know, putting together the context of where this person was interacting on the internet and how he interacted with Trump rallies in real life, what it actually appears like is he was engaging with politics, in this case, like you know, the Trump campaign, um, in the way that like 4chan and more deeply uh, immersed you know, online, uh, online users engage with politics, which is not for some sort of political victory, but for actually, in a lot of cases, a desire to undermine politics as a feasible solution to the world's problems. Mm. You know, as I was uh, reading um, what research there is, including from you and Emmy in preparing for this show, I couldn't stop thinking about the fact that to me it seems like maybe we have seen this before. Because I went back and I looked at um, research in the you know, the early 2000s and around 2010s about the process of how young um, the disenchanted, some young disenchanted Muslims in Europe became r radicalized, so much so that they were willing to become suicide bombers. And for example, I pulled up a, 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 a paper, a 2013 paper by Mohammed Ilyas. Um, it was published in the Journal of Terrorism Research from the Center for the Study of Terrorism and Political Violence at St. Andrews, which I'm sure you both know very well in Scotland. And back in 2013, he sort of categorized what he called um, a process of creating, in his words, uncontrollability. This sense that there was no agency, no ability to have any control over um, the tragedies of the world, that nothing mattered no matter what you did. Uh, and oftentimes that sense of uncontrollability was created through being immersed, whether purposefully or, you know, uh, purposefully by, by recruiters or accidentally just by existing on the internet through the kinds of videos that you're even somewhat describing now, uh, Alex and Emmy. And, and Ilyas says that 
that it's the um, breaking down of a sense of control, this uncontrollability that's opened up the possibility of the acquisition of extreme ideas uh, and the path to violence. So are there some connections here? Have we, in a sense, seen this before, Emmy? I, I think the idea that violent images are radicalizing is a thing that has been known to any extremist group, network, idea, forever. Violent images are, are traumatic and they inspire responses. And over time, viewing them, it, it causes you to, to change both your feelings towards, towards violence and changes your, your willingness to, to act with violence. I, I think that's been a known propaganda tactic forever. One of the things that's really important to this type of violence is that it is agnostic to who causes the violence and why. It'll show everything from ISIS beheading videos to Christchurch footage with little interest in, in why the violence took place, only, only that they get to view it. And then the people who, you know, look at this kind of content, who are immersed in this kind of content, then go on to create their own in the form of mass shootings. The, the, the hate speech aspect is really important because it, it contributes to the ability of these communities to dehumanize others and devalue human life in, in a way that makes people more willing to do violence. These, these are all things that, that contribute to a, a person's ability to harm another person uh, without you know, having that kind of instinct that would, that would stop you. I, I think aspects of that radicalization process have been used for uh, more clear ideological violence for, for decades, right? But there is a, a very Im important aspect of, of how these online communities function that I, I think is different now than it, it was in, in 2013.